Welcome to Real Filmmaking. My name is Corey Tyndall, and on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make an awesome looking time lapse using an older camera like the Canon 60D and Magic Lantern aftermarket software. I've done a couple of videos on this channel about Magic Lantern. I think it's some of the best aftermarket software you can put on an older camera like the 60D. It just unlocks a ton of features. If you want to know more specifically about that, you can check out the video I made. I'm sure on the YouTubes you've probably seen time lapses. People use them in vlogs to show like the passage of time. They're cool in like marketing materials to like, you know, see a cityscape or whatever. There's lots of really cool things that you can do with time lapses. On older cameras, it's hard to have the functionality because you have to buy an actual like intervalometer, a physical one, where a lot of newer cameras basically in the last five or six years have built in time lapse functions. So you can just set the stuff that you want and then it will time lapse for you. But if you're using a camera like the 60D, you're not out of options. Pairing it with Magic Lantern, you can get some awesome looking time lapses, doing a little extra work in post, but you'll still get the same really cool effects for your videos that just kind of take it up to the next level. Before I get further into this, the things that you will need when you're gonna do a time lapse is you need an older camera like the Canon 60D, you'll need Magic Lantern installed on an SD card, you will need an editing program. I'm using the Adobe Suite, so Photoshop and Lightroom are the programs I'm gonna be using in this video. And then you need a cool subject to time lapse. You might want to be someplace where there's a lot of motion passing through the frame. That's what makes the time lapse interesting. It's literally showing the passage of time. So find something cool. If you live by like a freeway or something, cars going up and down the freeway is really cool. The example that I'm going to use in this video is I run sound for a band and so I time lapse the setup because we have a lot of gear. So bringing all the gear in, setting it up, getting the lights going, all that. I did a time lapse of it and it's really cool to see like from start to finish. So if you have those four things, let's move on to how to get some goodness out of Magic Lantern when you're doing time lapses. So I've got my SD card in my 60D, so we're gonna fire up Magic Lantern. So I'm gonna flip it around so you can see, see what I see. Okay, so we're back here, we're on Intervalometer. So I'm gonna go into that, turn it on, hit Q, and so now I'm going to say every two seconds, like we said, and leave menu. So basically when I go back out, it's going to start taking pictures. See it counting down? Taking pictures right here. It's a little video inception. Taking pictures <laughs> of me videoing myself. That's really weird. Now to stop this, it's gonna keep doing this regardless and it's not gonna stop until you stop. So, what you need to do is hit the trash can menu. You're gonna have to go back in and actually, when you hit the trash can, it will take you back to the screen where you see the intervalometer and you're just gonna wanna hit the your enter button, your set button or whatever and actually turn it off. Now, different settings that you wanna keep in mind when you are time lapsing. You wanna make sure everything is set to manual. And if you don't know how to shoot manual, I did a video about how to get good settings for your Canon 60D to set it up in manual so you have full control. And the main reason this is so important when you do time lapses is because your camera, if you leave it on auto or if you leave it on a different setting, it's going to try to be continually thinking about things and how to calculate and if the light gets brighter, it's going to try to compensate from that and that's going to mess up your time lapse because the whole point of a time lapse is that you have a contained scene that looks the same and you are capturing the motion moving in and out. If your camera is trying to compensate for lighting or for different things, or if there's movement like of the camera itself, things are gonna get messed up. So you wanna set everything to manual. Also in time lapses, a good thing to keep in mind is you'll tend to probably want a more wide depth of field. Now shallow depth of field is like, you know, people are like, oh, I want the bokeh and the blown out background. When you're doing a time lapse, you want everything to be sharp and in focus. And so uh, the time lapse I shot of the band, I think I was shooting at f4, maybe f5, f5.6. You want things more in focus so you can see the clarity of the motion passing through the frame. You will still get really cool looking motion. You don't need to try to get shallow depth of field in there too. That's just gonna, it just increases the room for error. So shoot at a higher aperture. So once you have all those things, we're gonna jump over to my computer and I'm gonna show you 
how to actually edit those files, taking them into Lightroom, and then taking them into Photoshop, compiling them to get our awesome time lapse. So let's head over to the computer right now. So the first thing we wanna do is import all of our pictures into Lightroom. So once you get all the pictures, pull them from your SD card and you will pull them into Lightroom. So I have all of these pictures here and I actually did not save them to the disk because <laughs> I took an almost two minute time lapse which came up to like 2600 pictures so it was crazy but you're going to want to pull in your pictures and the best thing to do is to choose one of the pictures and to do some quick editing to it so you know you can go over to develop and right now it's saying the file can't be found I don't have the SD card in there but you want to go over to here and like just adjust anything that you need to so for this one I left it a little bit dark because the end result, I ended up with some lights and some other things, so I didn't want it to be overexposed when the lights came on. So you do some different things like that, and then if you go over to the sync button, you can sync those with the rest of the pictures that you just imported. So once you do that, you're gonna wanna come up here, go to file, then hit export. Okay, I do, yes. You're not gonna get that screen, that's because I don't have the files here, but you can see it says export 2,464 files. It's a lot of files. So you're gonna wanna come over here and then I export them to my desktop. You can put them wherever. Tell them to put them in a folder. And then the big, most important thing here is in the file naming, as you see right here, where it says rename to you want to click this drop down it probably only says like name or it's one of these but you want to hit custom name and you want to hit sequence so that is going to basically put all these pictures in numerical order and that is really key when we go into photoshop to do the time lapse so you can name it whatever you want start number and then hit export i've already done that so we're going to jump over to Premiere, it's gonna give me all that stuff, it's fun. Not Premiere, <laughs> I'm so used to being in Premiere. No, not Premiere, I'm gonna go into Photoshop. So you're in Photoshop. You're going to want to go to File, and you want to hit Open, and so the document that you saved where all those pictures are, you're going to want to find that. So for me, I put them here in this Anthem City 2019 tour folder. And you can see here, I've got all these pictures, Anthem Lapse, you know, 2464, 2463. So you wanna choose one of these and make sure it's either the last or the first one. And then you wanna hit image sequence. So what that is going to do, it's going to open all of them in an image sequence. So it's gonna open all of them numerically, which is what you want. And actually, you're gonna want to start with your first picture because if you start with the last one, it's gonna go backwards. So, I'm gonna hit open. It's going to ask you what frame rate you want. Popped up on my other uh, desktop. We want 24 frames per second. Generally, you know, depends on what you're editing, but 24 is gonna give you the most natural motion blur. So I go with 24 FPS. Most people working on YouTube use 24. So now it will have imported all the pictures as JPEGs into a movie file, which you then can see there's a playhead right here. Here, let me make this window a little bit bigger. There's a playhead and you can scrub through it and see all the frames connected together. So all the touch-ups that you did in Lightroom have been applied here. And so you get to see everything happen. So now, if everything looks good, you're gonna wanna go up to File, and you want to hit Export, and you wanna hit Render Video. So it's gonna do a little bit of progress stuff, then the Render menu is going to come up. You can name it whatever you want, you can set the quality on it. Um, I rendered mine out at 4K, so that way when I 
pull it into a 24 timeline, like a 1080 timeline at 24 frames, I can punch in a little bit and still have the highest quality. So if everything looks good, you just hit that render button and it's going to render out your video. So I hope this video was helpful in giving you the tips and the tricks that you need to use Magic Lantern with a camera like the 60D or an older Canon camera to get some awesome looking time lapses for your vlogs or videos you're making or for whoever. But if you found this video helpful, please like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Real Filmmaking for more content like this coming on a weekly basis. And until next time, keep making movies and watching movies, and I'll see you next time on Real Filmmaking.